the last lesson introduced us to the five great dynasties that together comprise the Delhi Sultanate. We also learned that these dynasties together ruled from 1206 to 1526. Now let's go over the names of these dynasties once again so that you do not forget them. The first dynasty was the Mamluk or slave dynasty that ruled from 126 to 1290. Immediately came the Khalji dynasty after this and you should be remembering that this is also called the Khilji dynasty and this dynasty ruled from 1290 to 1320. After the Khalji or the Khilji dynasty came the Tughlaq or the Tughlaq dynasty. And when did this dynasty rule? This dynasty ruled from 1320 to 1414. The fourth dynasty under Delhi Sultanate was the Sayyid dynasty. And this dynasty ruled from 1414 to 1451. And last but not the least was the Lodi dynasty. This dynasty ruled from 1451 to 1526. Now, new questions are coming to your mind, I suppose. One of which would be, how do we know about these dynasties? These dynasties were existent in the medieval period. So, how do we know about these dynasties? Let us now begin our discussion on that. The question we raised previously brings us to the point that what the sources of the Delhi Sultanate were. How do we get to know about these dynasties that were ruling in the medieval period? That is to say, these dynasties were ruling hundreds and hundreds of years back. How do we get to know about them? How do we know that this ruler ruled from this year to that year? How do we know how the systems of governance were? Now, when we come to discussing the Delhi Sultanate, we have to take into account the sources from which we get information on these dynasties. There were quite a few number of sources. The first among which would be inscriptions. So, inscriptions were the first source of information on the Delhi Sultanate. For any event in history, we rely on coins as a major source of information. Likewise, when we get to understanding the information, the details of the Delhi Sultanate, we also rely on coins. So, coins were also a major source of information on the Delhi Sultanate. What are the other sources? The third source that is one of the most important source that we have to take into account in this regard were monuments. So, Monuments were very important in providing us information on these dynasties. And one such monument was the Qutub Minar. And from what else do we get information on the Delhi Sultanate? We also get information on the Delhi Sultanate from Tariq or Tawarik. Now what does Tariq or Tawarik mean? Tariq or Tawarik means written documents by learned men. So, scholars and other learned men wrote information on these dynasties and these informations are preserved together in the form of documents that are called Tariq or Tawarik. And these documents have survived many generations and it is today that we get information on these dynasties under the Delhi Sultanate from these written documents. So, what are the sources that we just talked about? The sources that we just talked about are inscriptions, coins, monuments and Tariq or Tawarik that is written documents. Now, let us get into discussing each of these sources in greater detail. The discussion we just began must have left you wondering what inscriptions are. 
inscriptions are engravings on some surface that give us information on any event in history. So, inscriptions constitute a very integral source of information on any event that happened centuries and centuries ago. Likewise, inscriptions constitute a very important source of information on the Delhi Sultanate. Now, what were these inscriptions found on? Inscriptions or these engravings cannot take place on any and every surface. So, these inscriptions were found on copper plates. Copper plates were used to engrave or make these inscriptions. Likewise, inscriptions were also made on monuments. And one such monument that provides us lots of valuable information on the Delhi Sultanate is the Qutub Minar. What you see here are the walls of Qutub Minar and on these are the inscriptions that provide us with information. Inscriptions were also found on coins. These are coins on which inscriptions were made. Inscriptions were also found on weapons, seals, vessels, among other tools. So, monuments, coins, copper plates and various kinds of tools were made by the kings and on this inscriptions were made and in turn these inscriptions provide us with valuable information from which we can reconstruct the history of that period. Now what do these inscriptions tell us? These inscriptions tell us about the land grants made by the kings and the chiefs. Along with that, we get to know about the systems of governance or how these sultans under the Delhi Sultanate controlled their territory or what kind of things did these sultans do to the administrative systems. So, these are the things that is these are the information that we get to know from these inscriptions. We just discussed how important inscriptions have been in providing us information on the rulers of the Delhi Sultanate. It is from these inscriptions that we get to know which ruler ruled from which year to which year and which ruler succeeded that ruler. So, it is this chronological order of rulers as they came into power that we also get to know from the inscriptions. So, you must have understood by now how important inscriptions are in helping us reconstruct the history of any event that took place in the past. Inscriptions on tombs and forts describe how these tombs and forts were used during those times. So, the inscriptions that were made on the walls of these tombs and forts tell us for what purpose these tombs and forts were used by the sultans. Now, inscriptions that we see on the horse khas tell us something about it. What is it? This inscription tells us that the horse khas was a water tank. And what was this water tank used for? This water tank was used to supply water to the people of Siri and Siri was a garrison town made by Alauddin Khilji. We will come to this discussion later but for now we have to focus on how much information we got from these inscriptions alone. These have been very crucial in giving us a very clear picture of how these sultans ruled, of how Delhi Sultanate was. Now, you must be questioning how we get to understand these inscriptions. That is to say, in which language were these inscriptions made? These inscriptions during the Delhi Sultanate were written mostly in Sanskrit, Arabic, Persian 
और उर्दू एज यू कैन सी हियर सो दीज आर द लैंग्वेजेस दैट वर्ड इन यूज इन द कोर्ट्स ड्यूरिंग द दिल्ली सल्तानेट वी जस्ट फाउंड आउट इन विच लैंग्वेजेस दिस इंस्क्रिप्शन व मेड दीज वर्ड जनरली रिटर्न इन संस्कृत अरेबिक पर्जियन और उर्दू now some of these inscriptions were bilingual as well what does that mean that means that some of these inscriptions were written in two languages along with arabic some inscriptions were written in regional languages in the likes of gujarati or bengali now doesn't this come as a surprise to you because gujarati and bengali are languages that you and i speak today and even during the delhi sultanate these languages were also in use in the courts of the sultans so we found out the languages in which these inscriptions were made now let us discuss another important source that provides us with information on the delhi sultanate what is it coins coins are a great source of information for reconstructing history reconstructing history means we are in the process of understanding what was happening in the past and to understand the events of the past we need to understand when and why some things happened so to reconstruct history and to get information on the delhi sultanate we also rely on coins coins are a valuable source of information in this regard now what do these coins tell us coins bear the year of minting that is the year in which these coins were made along with that they have certain figures that were very prominent at that point in time so when these coins tell us the year of minting we know when these coins were made that is when these coins were made under the rule of a certain sultan that gives us a fair idea of when a sultan was ruling along with that certain important figures that are inscribed on the coins tell us a lot about that period in history the third very important source of information on the delhi sultanate is monuments monuments give us lots of information on when such and such thing happened under the rule of which sultan such and such thing happened and why that event took place it is for this reason that monuments are very important to us they are a great source of history of the delhi sultanate and one such monument is the qutub minar the qutub minar is a huge monument that is located in delhi and it is on the walls of the qutub minar that inscriptions are made and these inscriptions in turn provide us with information on the delhi sultanate now the inscriptions that are found on the walls of the qutub minar tell us under the rule of which sultan its construction was started it is from that we get to know that the qutub minar's construction was started by qutubuddin aibak in the year 1199 so you can understand how important the inscriptions are that are found on the walls of monuments in the likes of qutub minar but these inscriptions also tell us something more about the qutub minar what do these inscriptions also tell us let us now find that out the inscriptions on the walls of the qutub minar also tell us why aibak began its construction in the first place Why did he do so? He started the construction of Qutub Minar to celebrate the defeat of the last Hindu ruler of Delhi which marked the establishment of Muslim dominance. All this information can be gathered from the inscriptions that are found on the walls of the Qutub Minar. 
So, the founder of the slave or the Mamluk dynasty that was Qutbuddin Aibak started the construction of the Qutb Minar which signified the defeat of the last Hindu ruler of Delhi with which he now came to par on Delhi. All these informations can be gathered from the Qutb Minar itself. So, understand how important a source of history and information these monuments are. But, Ebuk was not able to finish the construction of this huge monument. Why is it so? Because in the year 1210, Ebuk died while playing polo. He fell off his horse and died. In the year 1210, Abak died which is why he could not finish the construction of the Qutb Minar. What he could do was only construct the basement of this magnificent monument. So, this monument that is a great source of information on the Delhi Sultanate was started by Qutbuddin Abak. Now, let us find out what happened to the Qutb Minar after Abak died in 1210 and only its basement was constructed? After Abak, it was his successor Iltutmish who added three more stories to this magnificent monument. But this did not mark the end of the construction of the monument. In the year 1369, the Sultan Firuz Shah Tughlaq under the Tughlaq dynasty that we will discuss later added the last two stories of the Qutb Minar. So, it was Qutbuddin Aibak who started the construction of this monument in 1191 and in the year 1369 Firuz Shah Tughlaq finished its construction. So, the construction of this one monument spanned across centuries and this monument is a huge source of history to us when we get into discussing the Delhi Sultanate. As a very important point, you should also remember that the Qutb Minar is the tallest brick tower in the entire world. It is 72.5 meters high and one has to climb 379 steps to reach the top of this monument. It is a huge monument and I suppose many of you have visited this on your trip to Delhi. Before proceeding with our discussion on the sources of the Delhi Sultanate, let me ask you a question. Who started the construction of the Qutb Minar? Was it Qutbuddin Aibak? Alauddin Khalji or Muhammad Ghori? Yes, you are right. It was Qutbuddin Aibak who started the construction of the Qutb Minar in the year 1191. When we began this lesson, we enumerated four sources of history of the Delhi Sultanate. What was the last one? The last one was Tariq or Tawarik. Let us now discuss this. What did we talk about the Tariq or Tawarik? These are documents written by learned men of the time. So, this can be considered the official history of the Delhi Sultanate. This is a very important source of the history of the Delhi Sultanate. Since this Tariq or Tawarik were written in the Persian language, historians have understood that Persian was the official language of the courts under the Delhi Sultanate. Now, who were these learned men who wrote the Tariq or Tawarik? These documents were written by learned men who lived in cities, cities as in mainly the city of Delhi. What did these people do? These people held many important positions in the administration. So, 
these people held many important administrative posts under the Delhi Sultanate and it is these men who wrote the official history of the Delhi Sultanate in Persian. We found out the languages in which the inscriptions were written. We also found out the language in which the official history of the Delhi Sultanate was written. It was in the Persian language. But on what surface did these learned men write the Tariq or Tawarik? They cannot write on air. So, in order to write the history of a time, one needs to have a manuscript. And to prepare a manuscript, there is an elaborate process. Let us now discuss the process of preparing a manuscript. The first thing that one has to do is to prepare the paper. As in, prepare the paper on which the history would be written. The next step is to write the text. This is something that the learned men did. They wrote the official history on these manuscripts. Now what happened after these learned men wrote the history or wrote the text? After this, they had to melt gold to highlight important passages and sentences. So the first three steps were to prepare the paper on which the text would be written. Then the next step was to write the text itself. Then the work was to melt gold to highlight important passages. Even in today's world, you and I still do this. We use a highlighter pen to highlight important passages in our textbooks. Similarly, these people when they were writing the official history or any other important document, they used to melt gold to highlight important passages. And finally, at the end of this process, the text had to be tightly bound together to give it the shape of a manuscript. So, it is in this process that manuscript was prepared. And these manuscripts have survived to tell us the history of the Delhi Sultanate or any other history for that matter. We just discussed at great length how a manuscript is prepared. And these manuscripts serve as a great source of information on the Delhi Sultanate. And these manuscripts were called the Tariq or Tawarik as we previously described. One such manuscript was the Circle of Justice. The medieval scribe called Fakari Mudabbir wrote the circle of justice. Just as we have photographers who click our photographs, scribes were people who wrote manuscripts. Scribes were people who wrote official documents of any period. So, it is this scribe called Fakari Mudabbir who wrote the circle of justice. Now, what information on the Delhi Sultanate do we get from this circle of justice? This circle of justice tells us how the survival of kings, soldiers and peasants were interconnected. Now, what does this mean? That the survival of kings, soldiers, peasants all were interconnected. That for existence one depended on the other. Let us now find that out. In the medieval period, India was ruled by kings. The kings needed to defend and protect their territories. For this work, the king required soldiers. Now, the soldiers were warriors who also needed money for their homes. So, the kings needed to pay the soldiers. From where will the king get the money? The king could get the money from peasants. But the peasants could only grow crops and provide revenue to the king. When can the peasants grow crops? It is only when 
the king promotes honesty and justice in the land that the peasants are happy and prosperous and they can grow crops so this way the survival of everyone was interconnected so we just talked about the circle of justice that tells us how the survival of kings soldiers peasants was interconnected one had to rely on the other for their sustenance and for their well being but from where do we get this information we get this information from the circle of justice that was written by the medieval scribe fakari mudabbir so now you can understand how important manuscripts were how important inscriptions were how much information they provide us so that we can reconstruct and understand in detail the history of the delhi sultanate it is for these reasons that we traced the various sources that provide us information on the delhi sultanate in the subsequent lesson we will now be talking about the first ruler of the mamluk dynasty that was kutubuddin aibak don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it's rewarding too so register for free now